Hello everyone, and welcome to another iType battery video. Those familiar with my channel and my content will very likely know about my PolarVault battery solution, which comes in black and clear. It is a lithium ion battery solution for SX70 cameras that effectively uses two AAA sized 10440 3.7 volt lithium ion cells, a two AAA battery holder, and a buck converter to provide power to the camera, thus facilitating the use of eye type film. It is wired up in such a way that reuses the camera's built in hinge switch on the side and effectively recycles it to, instead of cutting power to the ribbon circuits of the camera, uh, it instead cuts the negative terminal of power in between the battery and the buck converter, thus acting as an on-off switch. In the camera's collapsed position, power is completely shut off, so that no power can ever drain from the batteries. And in the erect position, the buck converter and thus the camera are turned on. It's an elegant solution. It is something that is made entirely from off-the-shelf parts, and it is a product that has proved very popular uh, in many of the conversions that I've performed. I think I've done, well, I mean, by the time of me releasing this video, the Polar Vault's only been out for a few months, and I've done literally dozens and dozens and dozens of them. Um, I've kind of lost count as to how many I've made so far, uh, but I would say that basically every second refurb, if not three quarters of the refurbs that I do now, clients opt for some kind of lithium ion battery solution, uh, and the most popular choice is my Polar Vault offering. Well, in one of the videos that I was talking about iType adapters, someone left a comment. I'm just going to bring it up on my phone right now. So, uh, YouTube user at CoolDuder1001 says, I'm curious as to what you think of using a 9 volt battery over two 10440 cells. The 10440s are nice because of their size, but if you forget the charger, then it's a lot harder to get an alternative while out and about. I feel like 9 volt would be a little better since you can get most of them, well, since you can get them in rechargeable forms and because you can buy them at most stores. I'm using a 9 volt on mine, uh, and yeah, basically saying that <clears throat> he's used a similar solution in the past. What Cool Dude is referring to is one of these. This is a 9 volt battery, just like the kind that you would find in a smoke alarm. However, this one is rechargeable. It is lithium ion and it has its own built in USB C charger. So, effectively, when it runs flat, you can grab a USB C cable, plug it in, a little red light will come on indicating that it's charging, and when that light turns green, you know it's fully charged. Uh, these are very handy if you have electronic devices that constantly chew through 9 volt batteries, because 9 volt alkalines are actually rather expensive. It's not uncommon to pay, you know, five up to ten dollars, depending on the store, for a single 9 volt battery. And these can be had for just over double the cost, but can be reused many times over. These are often used, for example, in guitars, such as an acoustic guitar that might have a microphone pickup in it uh, to allow amplification. I know my brother, when he was learning guitar in his younger days, was constantly chewing through 9 volt batteries. So this would have been a great invention to have had about 20 years ago. Um, but these things uh, can be used in conjunction with a buck converter to reduce the voltage from 9 volts down to 6 volts, just like the polar volt. It's the same principle, we're just taking a higher voltage, so these two batteries wired in a series produce 7.4 volts, well this one is 9 volts, uh, and we're basically reducing it down to 6 volts, which is what the SX70 is designed to take. Now, I don't really know what is inside one of these batteries. I've, you would have to open one up in order to figure it out, but I'm guessing that inside here sit at least one or two cells, maybe three wired in parallel, or perhaps there's one single large 3.7 volt battery uh, and plus the circuitry to upvolt it to 9 volts. Uh, 
whatever it, whatever lies in here, uh, it outputs a solid 9 volts at about 1300 milliamp hours. So it's quite a strong battery. And so I'm happy to announce that yes, you can actually use one of these as a polar volt. And I'm happy to now offer this as a solution. Um, there are of course some pros and cons, which I'll discuss now, and I'll mainly be comparing this polar volt, uh, which I'm going to call the polar 9 volt. How creative is that for a name? Um, but I'll be comparing the polar 9 volt just to the standard polar volt, uh, just so you know which battery adapter might be right for you. Let's start with the big advantage. Uh, the big advantage is these batteries can be found fairly cheaply from eBay. They are of course user swappable in the field. You can remove one and then reinsert one really at your leisure. Uh, just got to make sure that it yeah, just clicks in place. There you go, like so. And uh, the big advantage to these is, like a cool dude said, they are rechargeable with USB-C. So if the battery dies, you can take it out and most places that you go to uh, will have a USB-C charger. You can recharge the battery and away you go. It's very powerful. It works exactly like the camera should with a super rock, uh, rock solid six volts coming out of the little built-in buck converter. And uh, yeah, super powerful. And the other big advantage I believe that this battery would have over the standard polar volt is this battery is a much larger capacitor. Uh, capacitor. It's a much larger capacity at rated to 1300 milliamp hours. Now, depending on the 10440 cells you get, most of them I see are around the 350 milliamp hours, although I do have a set that say that they're rated to 1000. Now, whether or not that is accurate or not, I have absolutely no idea. Whether or not this is accurate, I also have no idea. Um, but at least on paper, the capacity should be higher than the 10440 cells. So that means you should be able to shoot more packs of film without needing to recharge them in the first place. Now, I know for a fact that you can easily shoot a good dozen or so packs of film on one of these uh, standard polar vault modded cameras without needing to uh, replace the batteries. So I would say that this would be a pretty similar ordeal. Uh, so yeah, advantage uh, is that these are USB-C rechargeable. You can obtain them fairly cheaply online for under $20. Uh, and another advantage, of course, is if you are out in the field, let's say the battery blows up for some odd, weird reason, you should be able to put in an alkaline battery cell instead, and it should do the trick, at least for a few packs of film, because it'll basically convert that 9 volt alkaline down to a very steady 6 volts. Uh, and 9 volt batteries are a very common type of battery. You can pick them up at any hardware store. Most pharmacies, supermarkets, even gas stations will carry standard, you know, disposable alkaline 9 volt batteries. So another advantage is, of course, uh, you now have the option to power it off something fairly standard. Whereas Although this does look like a AAA because it's the same physical size, if you put two regular AAAs in this camera, it won't work. Two regular AAAs are only three volts, and this thing expects a good 7.4. Now, with that said, I don't see uh, the USB-C charging and the need to charge as too big a drawback. The capacity on lithium-ion batteries is generally fairly high, but it is correct in that Yes, 10440 cells do need some kind of external charger, such as this. And you would basically, when the cells are drained, put them in. This is also USB, so you plug it into your phone charger or something like that, and it'll recharge the batteries. Um, but again, I don't see it as a big disadvantage to not have that built in, because one thing that you do gain from having a separate charger is that if this charger ever decides to die, you can just throw it away and get another. You know, if you accidentally step on the cord and break the end or I don't know, drop it in a pool or something like that and it blows up, they're very easy to replace. Whereas having it built in means that you're then going to need to repair whatever device has the built-in charger. So you, you, I guess just decide whether or not that's a priority for you or not. 
Um, so yeah, advantages, very powerful. Probably a higher capacity than the standard, um, although, you know, either will easily shoot through, you know, a good dozen or so packs of film. So it's not such a such a massive deal. Um, but yeah, certainly these are very cheap. They're very powerful, good capacity, built-in USB-C charger, means that you can easily charge it on the go. And should all of that fail and you lose your charger as well because some kind of natural disaster destroys all your batteries, well, you can go to the local store and you should be able to just grab a regular alkaline nine volt and continue shooting. Uh, let's talk a bit about the cons of such a design. One of the cons is, of course, it is larger than a standard uh, AAA battery holder. Uh, if you compare the two here, one is clearly much bigger than the other. Although I will say it's still a pretty compact solution. It is smaller than a power bar or a flash bar. And in terms of adding sort of extra footprint to the camera, it only adds a good, what's that? Two, two and a half centimeters or so in terms of its length. Now, truthfully, I could reposition this adapter pretty much anywhere along the base panel. It's just that in my opinion, the easiest place to mount it is at the end there. Um, mounting it anywhere else will s mean that the camera can't lay flat anymore, and it, I, I guess it just depends on where you want to add the extra bulk. Um, in terms of other disadvantages, uh, one thing that I wouldn't recommend is using a 9 volt solution on any kind of camera that has strap lugs. So for example, I have this PolarVault modded SLR680. Because of the position of the strap lugs, using such a large uh, adapter is not going to be particularly ideal. Not only does it block off both entrances to the strap lug adapters, but the extra height means that the lugs will have a hard time clipping into place. And you can see that because of the height difference from side to side there. The polar vault will still easily allow you to add a strap, whereas this one will impede things. So I would really only recommend going the nine volt route if you have a Model 1, a Model 2, or a Model 3 camera that you want to convert. Um, but yeah, I really like it as a solution, and I'd like to thank Cool Dude for his comment. Um, as I said, this is something that I'm going to allow to be built open source. It does use all off-the-shelf components, um, and I'm not going to do any videos that show how to wire one of these up, because it is otherwise exactly the same as the standard Polar Vault. The only real difference being that um, uh, yeah, the only real difference being that you use a 9 volt battery holder instead of a, uh, a AAA battery holder. That's the only significant difference that I can think of, otherwise they are wired in exactly the same. The buck converter works the same. Um, the way that it connects to the ribbon cables inside the camera is all completely identical. Um, but yeah, just yet another solution that's out there now. Um, what these all have in common is the fact that they are all able to be built using off-the-shelf parts. All the buck converters, battery holders, and wire that make these things up are commodity products. You can buy them pretty much anywhere online, from AliExpress to eBay. Uh, you can even go to a brick-and-mortar electronics store and probably pick up some of the parts that you'll need in order to build such a thing. So anyone that wants to build one of these, please feel free. Uh, just, I only ask one thing, and that's to give me some credit uh, where credit is due. Um, just like I'm giving Cool Dude credit for the idea. But otherwise, the way to wire it up, um, particularly into the hinge switch, um, yeah, just let people know where you heard about the technique. And if you're gonna sell it commercially, like I said, just make sure that, uh, that you let people know who invented the idea. Um, but otherwise, this is entirely open source and free for anyone that wants to use it. Um, so yeah, I would love to know your guys' opinion on this product. Uh, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, do you think the 9 volt is better than the 10440 cells? Which version would you prefer to use? What one do you think has more advantages over the other? Uh, do you have any other battery suggestions that you'd like me to try and adapt to Polar Vault? Um, let me know. Until then, you guys have been a wonderful audience, and I will see you next time.